So today I'm here to talk about this camera, which I wish was released last year when I started my production company and is a thousand pounds cheaper than the camera that I currently use as my workhorse. Now I'll start with the main obvious difference, which is the sensor, which is a full frame 10-bit 422 full frame sensor. The nice little bonus on this camera with the sensor is the nice shutters that come down when you turn off the camera. This is obviously optional. It takes a couple seconds to kick in once you close the camera, but it does keep your sensor protected when you're changing your lenses over. Now, as some of you might know already that the a7S III and the FX3 are kind of the industry standard of cinema line cameras for video production, and that's my main workhorse is the a7S III. And the one thing that really highlights to most video production companies is a 10-bit 422 full frame sensor. And not only has this one got 33 megapixels, which is significantly more than the 12 megapixels on the a7S III, which can hinder it in some ways because a video camera typically does perform better, especially in low light with less megapixels. What you do have with this is the ability to crop in photos, which you absolutely can't do with the a7S III. And that is one of the banes of why when I use the a7S III, it's just a video camera for me. So it's set up with its matte box, with its Ninja, and it comes out of the box just for video. Whereas this camera is the one that I can take to every single event. You also get the amazing picture profile, which is s Cinetone, which you will see, which I'm using on the a7S III, as a good example of how good a video can look. If you just set your white balance correctly and then stick it in picture profile 11, which is s Cinetone. So the next thing that massively impresses me is the focus mapping, which allows you to clearly see exactly where you are in focus on your camera in comparison to peaking, which can be a little bit off and you could be focused on the side of someone's head in comparison to their eye. So if you're shooting like F 1.4, which you could be on a lens like this Samyang 85, it can be quite easy to not be in focus on the right area. But with focus mapping, it's pretty hard to deny exactly where you're in focus. One of the other things that massively impresses me is the clear image zoom, which allows you to punch in up to two times, still keeping the exact picture quality that you did before and crop in with an APS type C on top, which is absolutely nuts. It looks amazing and it allows you to have unbelievable reach, something like 2.5 times zoom with absolute perfect picture quality, which is unbelievable. One of the other benefits of this camera is the buttons. You have photo, video, and dedicated S and Q mode, which allows you to keep your settings when switching between your dial modes, which is super handy and can be a bit of a pain in the ass with the A7S III. And obviously the main thing that all the vloggers love is the flippy screen. It's something that I don't use a ton for shooting myself with, but when I'm shooting low, and I'm doing photography and I need to get it out on the bottom and I can see what I'm doing, that's super handy. So in conclusion, for a thousand pounds less than the a7S III and the FX3, you're getting yourself a hell of a camera. One of the best hybrid cameras that I believe is out there on the market, if not the best, for the price point of 2,400 pounds or so. I do believe in the future that this could possibly stop people buying the a7S III and actually just go for the FX3 or this because it kind of puts the a7s3 in an awkward position of not really having a place on the market i guess so if you're in the line of getting an a7s3 i would highly look at getting this or the fx3 if you like this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe and if you're interested in any of the equipment that i use to film this today the links are down below